Good morning, good morning, my brothers and sisters. You are looking live at the Churchtown Church of God pre-Advent decoration. Pre-Advent decoration, pre-Christmas decoration. Look at that. This is where all of the stockings will go up with care, as the poem says, over here as well. All of the decorations are at the bottom of these stairs, waiting for Brian to carry them up today. There's where some more stockings will go lined. The hallway will be lined with stockings and the church will be decorated on Saturday for Christmas. Can you believe it? Christmas 2023 is upon us. Look what we brought up yesterday. We did a little work yesterday getting some things ready to go, the big wreath for the wall, the tree, a couple of decorations already brought up. There's only about a dozen boxes I need to bring up today. And then the big table, oh my goodness. This is the altar of the church. Good morning, good morning. Everyone, good morning. This is the communion table. I gotta move that today as well. What a Thanksgiving service we had on Wednesday night, oh my goodness gracious. It was so well attended, it was so warm, it was so, the music was so beautiful. The prayer, the scriptures, the Lord's Supper, it was just a wonderful time. I was just enjoying it all day yesterday as well. I need to walk around a little bit if you don't mind because I've gotta get my things ready for turning on the lights because Although we did come over and do work yesterday, I didn't get ready for turning on the lights. Oh, so there's my little tripod. I will still have to sit on the bottom level, if you don't mind, but I'll get you guys on a tripod so that you are not getting the whole earth-shaking, earthquaking vibe. So let's get you guys set on a tripod, then let me walk around and get my chair. We have a busy, busy day ahead of us today. I got a little helper with me today. Not for turning on the lights, but in general. My wonderful little helper is going to be with me, dragging boxes up from the basement. Oh, we've got to go to the Christmas decoration place and get the roping for the fence. Oh, my. So much to do, so little time. Isn't that always the case? Here we go. Let's get set up for a little talk today. Ah, oh, there we are, my friends. Hold on. Here I come. Oh! Don't be shocked. Don't be alarmed. Don't be amazed. Hold on. I guess that's about as good as it's going to get, right? It's just me on a Friday morning. They call it Black Friday, whatever. Never been into all of this stuff. When we were kids, uh, my mom was Mrs. Christmas. There's no doubt about that. She went overboard and crazy with Christmas. Uh, when Kelly and I were married, we just did not. We love Christmas, don't get us wrong. I bet we gadding about and gathering after gathering and then Christmas day, family after family and presents and presents and we just thought, no, 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 no. But Christmas is coming. And I, like I said, I am going to the Penn State game with my dear daughter tomorrow. She, excuse me for this, this is very rude of me to do. She got tickets to Penn State's last home game for her husband, for his birthday. And along with those, that ticket, she got two tickets for the fathers. So it's going to be my son-in-law and his father, my daughter and me. And it is shaping up, regardless of what today looks like, which is making my voice sound like this, regardless of what today looks like, tomorrow is shaping up to be a gorgeous day. Now, it's gonna be a long day, the game's at four. We'll get back, grab a few hours of sleep, and then we'll hit the ground running Sunday morning. Hey, it's Advent. 
Let me tell you right now, you should be inviting your friends to church. Come and hear the story, the old, old story of the birth of the Christ. Come and hear the gifts that are given. No, I like that, Megan. Right? There is maybe not. I mean, even us Easter is obviously right? Christmas and Easter. Now we have people called Christers that only come during Christmas and Easter because they're religious holidays. So be it. But we don't we as a church have to treat every Sunday like it's Christmas or Easter? Christmas and or Easter. Because it's all about the Christ. Every Sunday should be. And so as we draw in and we focus our attention on the birth, the, shall we say, and I always like to use this word because I think words matter. We zero in and we focus on the incarnation of God. Not an apparition, not a ghost. In the Old Testament, you will hear appearing as appearing as well Jesus didn't appear as he was human so the incarnation of the Christ and we're going to focus on that over leading up into the Christmas Christmas day and then Easter as we focus in toward the resurrection right the passion and the resurrection the death and the burial we focus in on that because without the resurrection what are we doing here it's sort of like what I say about faith. Our faith is useless. Our faith in God is useless if he is not perfectly faithful to us. Otherwise, it would just be like having a relationship and having faith in another human being. And certainly there are human beings that we can have more faith in than others, but still, that person we have faith in is imperfect. So it's just like another relationship. We talk about Jesus Christ and it, it, it having a relationship with Jesus Christ. Why? Well, because he <clears throat> was slash is God incarnate. He was slash is the sacrifice for all humanity. If he is not that, then it's just another relationship with another person. And okay, that's called a cult. When a, when a human being stands up and says, follow me, follow me, follow me, follow me. Christianity is not a cult. We follow God, not man. And we've been told this story. So like I said, we're getting into the Christmas season now. We're going to talk about love here at Churchtown. We've been talking about God's provision. Wednesday, we talked about the overall provision. And all of it is God's provision. When we head into Advent, love, faith, hope, joy, right, right, love, peace, hope, joy, advent, where it's God's provision. When we look at the Christian and the way the Christian is regenerated, the way the Christian does portray his or her faith, it points to God. Why? Because it is of God. The joy that I feel, the peace, the love, the hope that I have is of God and not of this world. That's the difference. So the church, had, you know, we, we've talked a lot on turning on the lights about what is biblical, what is extra biblical, and what is non-biblical. Even with, in terms of ecclesiology. Now, that's the fancy word, you know, because we teach it here. You know that's the fancy word for the way church works. What is your ecclesiology? It's basically how do you conduct your church services. So when we look at what is biblical, we say that is directly, there it is in scripture. This is what we are taught. It is not in dispute. Acts 2.42, we gather to hear the teaching. We gather in fellowship, we gather to sing songs and to worship in song and to break bread, including the Lord's Supper. There it is, boom. And our ecclesiology here at Churchtown has its foundation in Acts 2.42. That's what we know. 
So you're not going to hear a bunch of stuff here at Churchtown, Latin words and this and that and the other thing. You're going to hear teaching and preaching. We're going to sing and worship. We're going to pray and we are going to break bread together and we are going to fellowship. Now, extra biblical things are things that can be based in Scripture, based in Scripture, inferred from Scripture. Right? And some, some of the stuff is pretty big. Like, we want to talk about the word Trinity. The triune nature of Yahweh, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Now, that, that is a biblical slash extra biblical concept because each one is found in Scripture. In a couple of places, they are presented at the same place at the same time. So we draw from that, although God never says that I am. He teaches that he is, if that makes any sense. And so we say, oh, look at God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, triune nature of God. And then we have non-biblical things. Now, believe it or not, Advent is a non-biblical thing. <clears throat> There's no thing in that Lent is a non-biblical thing. It's something that the church has taken upon itself that refers back to Scripture. The first two come from Scripture out. The third one, non-biblical, comes from humans back, if that makes any sense. Now, non-biblical things aren't always awful. Advent is not a bad thing. It helps direct us and focus us to the incarnation of the Christ. And if handled correctly and absorbed correctly and understood correctly, it should take us from the top of the funnel right to the pinpoint, the incarnation of the Christ. But Advent is not a biblical thing. Lent is not a biblical thing. And you say, well, and around here, we don't practice Lent because if we wanted to practice Lent and not make a mockery of the Word of God, then we would batten down the hatches. We would sacrifice for 40 days and actually sacrifice for 40 days in prayer and supplication, fasting to seek to know the will of God. We want to do it right then we should do it that way. We, I don't want to make a mockery of it by putting ashes on people's heads and then people saying, well, I've given up chocolate for 40 days. That's, get out of here with that stuff. I've given up social media. Good for you. Fasting, praying, sacrificing, seeking the will of God through sacrifice. Because that leads us from the top of the funnel to the sacrifice of Christ on the cross. Okay? So we're in one of these seasons that has been created by man, but for a very good intent, and again, if handled correctly, takes us all on this journey to the incarnation of God in Jesus Christ. That's where we are. Your churches shouldn't decorate for Christmas. It's all secular. Stop it. Now, again, with, of course, with anything, if you turn your church into some sort of Christmas candy lane, okay, what are you doing? But to celebrate the Christmas season and you have the Christmas decorations, if you will, the hanging of the greens and the and Christmas lights and things of that nature. We have a tree at Churchtown. It's a secular symbol. That's not, I just explained to you that Advent itself is non-biblical. Is it bad? No. It's having the Christmas tree that people can identify with in this season, and it's going to be beautiful. Is that wicked or evil? Does it bring evil spirit into our church? No, stop it. If you forsake the meaning of Christmas and again, turn your church into a Christmas candy lane, then you have jumped the shark, as we say. Jumped the shark. 
Research where that term comes from. It's amazing. Jumping the shark. The old folks like me, you'll know. You know what it means. Jumping the shark. Where it came from. So there's a little Advent 101. We are getting ready. I'm going to get all the stuff ready. Mackenzie and I are working together today. We're going to bring all the Christmas decorations up and just set them here. And then tomorrow morning, there is a, a committee of individuals that are coming to take care of business. And Sunday morning, this place will be a wonderful, wonderfully decorated, lit, candles, lights. Oh, beautiful. Whenever you enter a city or village, search for a worthy person and stay in his home until you leave town. When you enter the home, give it your blessing. If it turns out to be a worthy home, let your blessing stand. If it is not, take back the blessing. If any household or town refuses to welcome you or listen to your message, shake its dust from your feet as you leave. I tell you the truth, the wicked cities of Sodom and Gomorrah will be better off than such a town on the judgment day. Matthew 10. What in the world would that have to do with God's love? Well, we're going to find out on Sunday, aren't we? Let me read another paragraph. <clears throat> Look, I am sending you out as sheep among wolves, so be as shrewd as snakes and harmless as doves. But beware, for you will be handed over to the courts and will be flogged with whips in the synagogues. You will stand trial before governors and kings because you are my fellow, you are my followers. But this will be your opportunity to tell the rulers and other unbelievers about me. When you are arrested, don't worry about how to respond or what to say. God will give you the right words at the right time. For it is not you who will be speaking. It will be the spirit of your father speaking through you. God's love. Let me give you a little hint. And I don't want to preach necessarily, do, you know, it's not doom and gloom at all. It's challenging. God's love. God's love as is in you and demonstrated through you by its very nature because of his very nature goes against evil, the evil of this world. If God's love is in you and moving through you, by the very nature of God, it's going to be juxtaposed. It's going to go against this world. You do not have a choice, in other words, if you are a submitted follower of Jesus Christ, indwelled by the power of his Holy Spirit, than to experience to some degree what is being discussed here in Matthew 10. And around the world, we have Christians that are submitted followers of Jesus Christ, indwelled by the power of his Holy Spirit, that on a scale of one to 10, experience from one being very little, <laughs> resistance, opposition, persecution, marginalization, to 10, hiding from the government officials because if they're found with a Bible or found saying a Christian pair, they will be killed. So we see that around the world. We see this. We say, well, you know, Jesus is speaking in hyperbole. No, he's not. Read the news. And you have to go looking for real news. God's love naturally, because of his nature, when it breaks into the darkness of the world, you are going to experience that tension. And sometimes, like I said, around the world, a whole lot more than that. But it is natural. The hymns are filled with it. One of the great hymns of the church. Um, Do thy friends forsake thee? Just a closer walk with thee. The cross before my friends behind me. What? The world behind me. My, the cross before me, the world behind me. 
we're going to talk a little bit about that. We're going to talk a little bit about sacrifice. Because we're going to couch that love in the idea of sacrificial love from beginning to end. Should be a good Sunday. So that's that. That's where we are. That's where we are here at Churchtown. We are gearing up for an amazing weekend. Getting ready today. Decorating tomorrow. We've got a, a big game on a big game tomorrow on Saturday for me and my some of my family. And I'm just kind of babbling on. Wanted to check in with you guys, let you know what we're up to here. Wherever you go, are there friends and family that you care about? Invite them to come to church. My prayer is that wherever you are, your church is reading and preaching from Scripture. So an individual who doesn't know much can learn. And everywhere, every Sunday, the message of the good news of the life and the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ should be taught, should be preached, should be demonstrated. Father, we do pray that your church will rise this weekend and honor you in all things, Lord. Oh, in Jesus' name, may we worship you, not only celebrate you, but worship you in name. Worship you through our prayers and music. Worship you as we are inspired by your holy word. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray for your people to live as your people. Amen. God bless you guys. I hope that you have amazing rainy day Fridays. I intend to have an amazing rainy day Friday. And we will see you in church. <laughs>